The old system has been in operation since 2018. The new passports that will be produced thanks to this new issuing platform belong to the latest generation of passports recommended by international civil aviation control bodies, notably the Roycey International Civil Aviation Organization. With this new technical platform at the forefront of modernity, major innovations have been incorporated into both the collection and production system and the passports themselves. Among other things, the new system will enable online pre-registration following a simplified, paperless procedure, and flexible enrollment. Accessible in connected or offline mode, instantaneous transmission of data from passports collected in embassies via specialized lines to personalization centers at the UN and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, enabling passports to be issued to foreign nationals in the same time frame as those residing in Burkina Faso. So, a real-time monitoring system for the passport production and issuance process, enabling citizens to track the progress of their applications and authorities to ensure transparent management. Enhanced security, no stringent controls and biometric authentication mechanisms reduce the risk of fraud and identity theft, while guaranteeing greater protection for citizens' personal data. Interoperability with other national systems facilitating secure and efficient exchange of identification data but also an extension of our flight capacity with the opening of a VIP center in Walabgo and a third center in Tekodogo after Ouagadougou and Bobo. New passports, whether ordinary, diplomatic service or refugee passports, are fitted with electronic chips. With greater data storage capacity, the new passport has 34 pages compared with 32 for the old one, and the data page for each type of passport is made of colored polycarbonate, with state-of-the-art security features. All these elements, drawn from the panoply of features characteristic of the new passports to be officially launched, meet international standards and are part of the new generation of passports recommended to states by Roycey. Greetings, families. Welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. This video, as you can tell, is Burkina Faso. Great news from Burkina Faso. They have been working on a new passport for a long time now, and they have introduced it last year night to the world it will benefit burkina base abroad so i will say this video is mainly for burkina base abroad to know the new system that is going on for them to apply for a new passport according to the news the old one they can still use it but for security reasons and for modernization as they told us they are modernizing everything and this is the way of doing it. Otherwise, it is good. I think Ghana has done the same thing two or three years ago. So yes, you have to go with your face, fingerprint, a lot of things all together to put this passport into the system. So it's good news for Burkina Bay's home and abroad. He mentioned something like refugee passport as well. I did say there is refugee passport. Somebody was asking me in the comment section, this is the first time I don't know we have refugee passport. Yes, there is refugee passport issued by UN and every government has the right to issue it. That passport is very powerful. I think they have limit that you can issue. And also it depends on your circumstances before they will issue that passport. So yes, they will be doing that as well. Please let's listen to more and I'll be back. Thank you for your time. Evening, Mr. Lore. Are there any other innovations in the new passport you've just launched this morning? Thank you. Perhaps like to start by saying that today's launch is really the culmination of a long process that began in 2022, a process that recommended the introduction of a reliable passport, and the innovations are those you discovered earlier in the report ready to apply online and we're also making it easier for foreign nationals to obtain their passports much more quickly but what's also worth mentioning is that the user has a tracking system that enables him or her to keep track of the status of his or her application throughout processing and it's also a system that is interoperable with most identification systems coming back to the passport itself there are a few innovations on the document itself we've gone from 32 to 34 pages this is quite interesting for those who travel a lot, as it means a lot more visa pages. We have a chip that, which has that has much more robust and can take much more data. 
And we especially have the data page, which is made of polycarbonate. It's a special material, which is quite resistant and also allows the integration of many security elements, making our passport much more reliable. Apparently, what hasn't changed is the cost of issuing the passport. It remains at 50,000. However, for the sake of completeness, we must point out that there are two new identifications that could have an influence on the cost increase. The first innovation is that we have been instructed to set up a VIP enrollment center in Ouagadougou. This VIP enrollment center should enable us to shorten delivery times and also to offer convenience to users. And these circumstances will entail costs. This is great news. It's great news for Burkina Faso home and abroad, like I said. It went on to explain a lot of things, the reason why this passport has come to be and talk about ECOWAS and other organizations that Burkina Bay or Burkina Faso is in need. And free traveling as well. He talked about why they have to change. It's important. They have to change this passport. And apart from changing and digitizing the passport, a lot of things are the same. When he mentioned ECOWAS, I was thinking, I thought ECOWAS was saying that they will not be giving them free travel, but as he mentioned it, it means they are still using some part of ECOWAS things or whatever. So yes, this passport, you can use it to travel to any ECOWAS countries as well, and they might be having the logo on it. It involves a lot. It involves a lot, and it is good to have it because Things are changing very quick and very fast. Digitization, modernization, as they said, is happening now in Burkina Faso and across the AES. Please, let's listen as he explain more of this, the qualities this passport has. I'll be back. In this case, these are the standards of the ICAO the International Civil Aviation Organization, and any passport that complies with ICAO standards allows its holder to travel anywhere in the world. But of course, to enter a country, you have to comply with the entry requirements for that country. And this is where your question becomes interesting. So I'm going to show you a few passports. There's this one, it's the very first Burkina Faso passport, it's the first generation, it's from 1998, you'll see that there's no CDA logo above it, there you go. And the second generation, which is also from 2006, there's no ECOWAS logo above it. There you go. But the meme directive, which institutes the ECOWAS passport, recommends that the D and the passports is from 2000, but Burkina and only went in 2013 with this passport. They're the third generation here, so in the end, then here's the fourth generation, this one being the fifth. So remove and mention is to admit the ECOWAS logo today. Now, this isn't something new. We've already experimented with these cases. Now what about the question of free movement? In the federal space, the ECOWAS space. So at this level, and I'll perhaps reassure you by saying that and it's not just ECOWAS, we also have another community space in the sub-region. This is the EU month. There are eight countries in the EU and Burkina Faso is still in the EU to this day. So here are our neighbors Côte d'Ivoire, Togo, Benin, Niger and Mali. And there you have it. Guinea-Bissau and Senegal are members of the WAMU, and by virtue of the rules of free movement within the WAMU. So our fellow citizens shouldn't have to suffer for these countries. That's all there is to it, even if SIDAO isn't mentioned, since we're basing ourselves on EMOA rules. For other SIDAO countries that aren't part of EMOA, the question will be settled by bilateral agreements between states. And that's without counting the fact that, as a state, we reserve the right to apply the principle of reciprocity to those who request visas for our fellow citizens. The authority will reserve the right to also apply the visa principle. So that's basically it. Our fellow citizens don't really have anything to worry about as far as freedom of movement is concerned. Many of the measures are still in force. Credit goes to FASO 7 and also Burkina 24 for sharing this important news with us. Thank you so much for your time. This is just a quick news I want to share with you. It will benefit a lot of Burkina Bays, like I said, so they should go and contact their embassies and get this new passport that will help them to travel everywhere because 
they will give them a time limit anyway. The one, the old one you have when they expire, then you, when you are going to renew it, you get a new one. The price is the same. It will be quicker. You can apply for it online, which is also great. So you sit in your house, you apply it, and then, I mean, you print the form and then you send it with your old one. But I must tell you from experience, they will have to see you in face to take a picture of you, fingerprint everything with this new passport. Um, he didn't say that, but that's what they will do definitely to digitize that passport for you. I'm grateful for your time, my families, my new ones, those who are passing by. Thank you. My name is Mamri. I will see you soon. If anything come across, I'll come and share it with you. Bye-bye. Have a blessed day.